Of course. I actually, I have a uh, hunting trip next weekend. Uh, just a little weekender. Yeah. And then a couple weeks after that, end of October, I got a big elk season to go do and a duck hunt in between there. I'm looking to try to stack as much of that stuff in my, my freezer as I possibly can. Cause that's, you know, to go back to that documentary and factory farming and shit and moving more plant-based, I kind of, I'm on like a general tilt there, but I'm also a big meat eater, yeah. but I don't, I'm not about to go to the store and buy a big T-bone or, you know, a ribeye <laughs> necessarily because right. I know how that is procured and I'm not down with that. But if I could eat deer, elk, bear, you know, yeah. all, all the things that I could potentially harvest in the apocalypse every day, yeah. I'd be super okay with that. No, hundred percent. And obviously you guys saw the jobs before I was probably the most depressed person in America. Oh, looking bro. At that. And so, yeah, it's pretty brutal, but like, that's another reason why where I was just like, we something had to change because uh whatever we were doing is not gonna wasn't gonna hold through yeah yeah it's, totally all right let's talk about that for a minute since you brought it up so i was watching yeah, before we came here um joe biden a press conference when they're talking about infrastructure right and he was talking about the amount of jobs that they had created and like the record amount of jobs that that we were creating unemployment is down under five percent for the first time in like however long right and we talked about i think you may even have been on that episode where we talked about the important figure when talking about jobs is not necessarily unemployment especially now that the increase has fallen off right the important number is the labor participation percentage and i don't know what that number is but the fact that they're not bringing that up when they made such a point of it six months ago and they're only focusing on the unemployment number tells a huge story because oh. we've, we've been talking in our group chat just over the last few days. And we talked to the pre-show about the, the ferries that are canceling all these fucking ferries. Right. And so that's just one industry here. There's also the garbage trucks that we have been having an enormous problem with here. The recycling not being picked up. Oh yeah. Like, the whole neighborhood yeah. didn't get their trash picked up this week. And that's, we recycling though. We live in Keyport. You live it was right here. And then yeah. when we were in Port Orchard last week, it was the same thing in Port Orchard. So yeah. it's it's not even like it's just one area. It's this whole, certainly our whole county at the very oh, least, yeah. right? I mean, it's and, most industries. And the explanation point. for all of it is jobs, is staffing. We don't have enough people here. You know, we, we can't hire enough people. And I don't, I don't understand where all of the people are and how people can afford to stay home if they're not getting any more unemployment anymore. If that even was the deal before, yeah. was that, oh, I'm making enough money now that I don't need to go back to what I was doing because I'm fine on unemployment. That's not a thing anymore. Mm-hmm. And even if it was, I have a hard time believing people were making enough to be saving money consistently enough to sustain them an extended period of time. You know, and I may be wrong because obviously it depends on the way that people use their money. But yeah. um, it definitely I, seems strange i don't know where everyone is um (laughs) if they're not at jobs especially jobs that we talked about that are traditionally pretty good jobs you know the ferry truck driving right that's a huge thing shipping all of these boats that are stuck in ports all around the united states because we don't have enough truck drivers i don't know where everyone is you know yeah where are all the people yeah i I think it'll be interesting i think uh we we all knew the september jobs was going to be well at least i guess right but like you're right. Now that the unemployment insurance, like the boost is over, I think that everybody's going to come by. Like our participation rate has been relatively roughly consistent. It's, you know, it's, you can't say it's super consistent because 0.1% of America is like three, was it 33? Yeah. 3 million people. So like, or no, 300,000 people. So it's a lot, but I think that's been consistent. I think it just went off in September, so I think October will be more telling. I think on the other note that when they're touting the jobs, like they're like, this president has created more jobs than any of the presidents in our world. And like this was supposed to be the pandemic of all pandemics, right? But like they just <laughs> refused to be like, hey, like he also started with the like the highest amount of job loss that like had occurred right. in like decades, right? right? Like yeah. this was time. And so I thought it was more disingenuous, not so much for the participation rate, just from like looking at it from economics, it's just like like right now people don't like we created a environment where people didn't have to go to work and now people don't want to go back to work and so i think we're going to see a tough problem and i really think people are just waiting i think two things are happening i think people are waiting for this next bill because they're floating around uh like the stimulus with more stimulus more money right more entitlement programs Mm -hmm. you also have the 300 dollars coming per kid which is money and then lastly 
I think people, they're, they're just not going to want to go back to jobs that are considered hard, right? I think we're creating just like a softer way of life, you know? Oh, yeah. The amount so, of distant, what, what do you call it? Or remote work. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know anecdotally, um, I could tell you privately who this is because you'll know who it is, but somebody within, they applied for a job. Uh, a week later, they got a, a hit up on, Oh, I don't remember how they, I think it was just email at first, but they essentially were like, Hey, download this, this app called telegraph so that we can communicate there. They did a text on telegraph interview for a day for about an hour. And then the following day, they had kind of like a follow-up interview again, via text. And after that, they were like, okay, cool. You're hired. Um, we're sending you a check in within the next 48 hours so that you can procure all the supplies that you'll need to work from home. And you'll have two weeks of indoctrination training. And then full-time is no more than 30 hours a week at 40 bucks an hour. Go within, what? within, within a single work week with, within less than five days, got an interview, distance interview and got hired within a week and got a check sent in the mail to procure all your home office equipment that you need to do your job. I mean, this, I mean, it was insane to me. I knew like this long distance working thing was pretty big, but to see it firsthand like that, to see how fast it goes, to see these massive reputable companies that are looking for like data entry positions and, you know, just filing of paperwork and things like that. Just, here you go, here's your money, go. I just, we need people, you're hired. Like, but those people, the point I wanted to get to from that, sorry, um, I got a little off kilter there. Um, the way the job numbers come in, right? Mm -hmm. Understanding how those job numbers are procured is very important to understanding what that ultimate number means. Would that, would that be safe to say? Yeah. Because just saying a number is saying a number. But you talk about jobless claims, you know, you're usually talking about the amount of people that are claiming unemployment at a time. Right. And then when people, for whatever reason, whether they've in traditional time run out of the opportunity to claim unemployment or something like that, they drop off the rolls, they're no longer considered unemployed by the numbers that we have. So I would, I they're would not part of the labor force, but yes. that's the, like, so that's the number that is just rarely discussed at all. Yeah. So I'd be very curious, even with the, the numbers as bad as they are now, what's the real number look like? There's yeah. got to be way more. Yeah, I go back and forth with this. I think it, it's tough, right, to balance because, like, how do you bring back the people who aren't looking to do the, the labor force, right? Like, it's mm -hmm. tough to be like, okay, like, what do you consider a person that would be in? Because some people don't want to work regardless. It's tough to say because there hasn't been, like, a drastic shift in our labor participation rate. Mm -hmm. And, and but since in its term, right? Like it's been pretty consistent. It obviously dropped off in 2007. So like America's consistently been working less as the entitlement programs have gone, right? And that's mm -hmm. that's to be expected. I think the telling number is we only we're only we added 144,000 jobs. There's never been more so open bad. jobs. There's, there's never been more. There's 10 million open jobs. So I think the fact that nobody wants the jobs, like if you don't have a job right now, you're just not looking. Like you guys have seen it in your town. Like oh you yeah, drive right. down. My wife's a recruiter now, so she, I'm seeing all the jobs that she's starting to like have access to fill people in, and everybody's looking for people, and people don't want to go back right now, or or they feel like like or they're they're not fitting in. I, I'm shocked though, like at all my friends run businesses, workplaces. There's like, hey, we're still looking for people, and they're still not like not not doing it. They're still not finding oh, yeah. people, and that's shocking to me. Or everyone's just like. It's crazy. And like, you kind of expect it. Like the one they always cherry pick is like fast food. And they're like, well, who would ever want to work that at that wage? And I'm just like, okay, I got it. But like, those aren't the only people looking 